Becca says, as someone who's interested in uh, music and songwriting, I was wondering if there's a specific process that you go through to get an idea down. To get an idea down? Um, I wonder what that means. Uh, in terms of... Well, I guess the, right, the actual writing part of it, um, I tend to either think of it, think of ideas as I'm just sort of going about my day and I find myself singing something and uh, occasionally get something that feels good enough to actually maybe you know, run over to make a note of and if, <clears throat> or I'll sit at the piano for ages and you know, kind of keep pushing myself until for hours and hours until something good comes out, hopefully. Um, but then yeah, when it comes to actually sort of making that into something audible or recordable, um, I always record all the demos on a just on a dictaphone, the like cassette tape to start oh, yeah. with. So I have that always have that on my piano or wherever I am in my bag, um, and uh, and then I'll sort of so I know that I've I've got it, and then once I've got something that I really feel is like a complete song or near enough, then I'll start a demo on my on my laptop normally, or if I'm at home here in the. In the studio. Do you have all your cassette tapes of all your dictaphone moments? I do. Wow. You don't record it, so you, you, you don't you start a new tape, you don't you don't record yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. I've got all all of them back to sort of two thousand and two or something. Oh really? Mm. Wow. Uh, next question is from Jaron, oh, sorry, Jaron in Seattle, who asks, What is the shortest amount of time it took to write a song and what song was it? That's a very good question. Um, I think... In terms of a complete song, it probably would have been something off the first album, because <laughs> ever since then I haven't had time to kind of... It always feels like I've been sort of trying to write between gigs or tours or whatever. Um, and also, probably spend more time working on the lyrics in the later albums. But um, I think Summer Only We Know was pretty quick. In fact, I think all of those ones were, were pretty quick, actually. What's quick? Like days? Or uh, no, probably quicker than that, generally. Um, yeah, I, I think. I'm pretty sure that somebody we know and everybody's changing were both, both pretty fast. I mean, it's it's very hard to tell because I work on an idea for a, a couple of hours or, or less, you know, get it down mm -hmm. 10 minutes and then go back to it the next day and then the next day. and um, Or maybe the lyrics will take a, <coughs> a week to sort of for something to slot into place. Um, but it's not like I'll be sitting there for weeks on end sort of only working on that song, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never eating. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it's. I find generally, on average, it it can take. Can certainly take. You know, days, weeks, months, really, to 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 bring a song from starting it to actually finishing it, mm. and you know, it's sort of just sort of dipping in and out of it. And I've got songs. That um, that have been around for years that I, I still. Kind of cling on to <laughs> the hope of and just one day the, the perfect lyrical phrase is going to slot into that. But, um, wow. yeah. Uh, Drahaus asks, What is your favourite food? <sighs> Vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce. Very nice. Homemade has chocolate has sauce. It has to be homemade chocolate sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Tracy from Texas uh, asks, when you write a song or lyrics for Keen, do you have Tom's voice in your head or your own? Uh, I think Tom's really. Um, with lyrics, with lyrics I, I have to, I definitely write very, very much from the heart and try and, I'm not very good at kind of, telling stories or writing about things that I think people will want to hear about. It's, you know, I have to try and do something that feels very, uh, you know, potent to me in, in some way. 
Um, so yeah, I definitely try and dig that out of somewhere. But then, you know, from that point onwards, I definitely hear Tom's voice. And I guess I also really try and I have the, the great benefit of having known Tom for so long. And, you know, I, I feel that I probably am instinctively also trying to write when I write stuff that I feel is important to me, I, I think I instinctively kind of I'm writing stuff that I <laughs> I feel is important to, to both of us mm. or even all of us as a band because I think you know we spend so much time together and so much time talking about the world and just, you know lightheartedly or more seriously or whatever and, and you I think you kind of develop you know over such a long friendship you develop a kind of world view which you know we all have different opinions on things but I, f I feel that my role is to try and represent that in the in the kind of raw song. Uh, hi from South Korea says when you're playing piano you look very passionate and it seems a little dangerous have you ever injured yourself during a performance? Um, yeah only minor injuries generally um, I cut my fingers quite frequently, which can be quite dramatic because of the, the white piano keyboards. So be sort of, you, be, you know, you can cut. They're quite. They can be quite sharp on the edge. Or if you've got a broken key, and you sort of catch it, and then there's sort of blood all over the keyboard. It looks very gory, and there's a tiny little, <laughs> tiny little cut. But uh, I did a good one. I got through the whole of the Perfect Symmetry tour without sustaining any injuries at all. I don't think. And then the very last gig. In fact, I think it was the second last song we were playing under pressure in Spain, and I sort of missed. I was sort of rocking out, and I misjudged the mic stand, and just completely headbutted my mic stand, and <laughs> was sort of almost kind of blacked out for a minute, and <laughs> didn't know sort of what, what I'd done because I had my eyes shut, and I suddenly <laughs> sort of felt this massive thud in the middle of my face. So um, that was uh, slightly uncomfortable for a few days. Yeah. Sherry W from Michigan in the USA uh, asks how it felt doing your own roadie work on the Mount Desolation tour. Uh, it's great. I, I loved it. I mean, I don't really. Um, e even though I, it's great to be in the, such a luxurious position that we have lots of people working with us when we're on the road. I, I do feel I have a sort of instinctive. Uh, reaction against kind of molly coddling mm. <laughs> um, and I I don't I certainly don't have a problem with setting up my own gear and, and carrying stuff I quite enjoy it really in a way I feel more comfortable doing things that way um, mm. yeah but no it, it was great I, I enjoyed it of course it's it very simple when there's a when you're only playing tiny venues and you've just got a piano and a microphone mm. set up, it's not quite the same as setting up a massive lighting rig or something. Really <laughs> Doing the probably best screens. not to <laughs> unleash me on that. Yeah. Um, Driver PC uh, says that you said your best website of 2010 was YouTube. Um, do you ever look at covers of your songs on there, uploaded by fans? Have you ever, do you ever check out other versions of Keen songs and that sort of thing? Um, on there? um I my favourite one I do I do check them out. I saw a lovely version of actually it was a Mount Desolation song. Um I think was that a video, was it an audio thing? I don't know. Anyway, Mark Mark Mart McDonald, who has his own keen gear site, so done a lovely version of the Mount Desolation song. But the my favourite keen one ever was by a a group of um I think they were Swedish girls, <laughs> obviously, um, but they were, I can't remember what song, I think they'd done a couple of songs and it was all like lovely harmonies yeah, and stuff, it was brilliant. Um, I can't remember if it was posted on keymusic.com or if it was just something that sort of was sent around, but yeah, it was, that was fantastic, but it is, it's amazing how many people do that and I I sort of I guess I did my little cover of these days for example and the, the, the pleasure you get from recording a, a cover like that um, 
think is it's great. I really, I really sort of empathise with it, I suppose. Mm. Well, feel free to do more. <laughs> I rather liked it. Brian55 asks, which radio station do you listen to at breakfast? Um, I don't listen to the radio at breakfast. Um, I, my daughter listens to uh, Destiny's Child over and over again. <laughs> she calls them the fairy band. <laughs> and she likes listening to Booty Delicious even though she's only three, so there's a lot of, yeah, independent women. What's that album? Survivor, is it? Yeah. Anyway, so we listen to that album quite a lot, but, um, but yeah, I listen to the radio in the car. I listen to Radio 1, basically. Molly Rick asks, uh, what is your favourite Keen lyric? And which one is the most meaningful to you? So maybe two different lyrics. Um, I think, I mean, they're all, they're all meaningful to me. Um, I think the, the lyrics to Hamburg song I really love, from a sort of emotional point of view, I find them very, um, still find them quite sort of heart-wrenching. Um, the one I, l I love is the, uh, when we fall in love, we're just falling in love with ourselves, which is um, the only the only thing I don't like about it is it's quite it's a bit of a bleak <laughs> outlook on uh, that sort of characteristic of humanity. But I think there's a lot of truth in it. Um, but uh, you know, you could write a you could write a book about that that subject. Mm. But um, but yeah. But there are, lot, there are lots of lyrics that I'm, I'm proud of, and I, I guess I'm, I'm proud also of the fact that, that I've actually written some lyrics that I, I, I'm proud of, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I'm glad that I've, because I, I put so much effort into the lyrics and I don't find it easy at all. Um, and I'm glad that there are lots of good ones and not too many stinkers.